What time is it? It's Packard Books at Dawn. Hat? Check. Shirt? Check. Pants? Optional. Mug? Double check. Check us out at cafepress.com slash Packard Pokes at where you can get all this great merchandise and more. Do you like Packard Pokes at and want to hear it on demand and on the go? Download the free app today at stitcher.com. Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. This is Packard Pokes at and I'm poking at your news. Your news. Hello, everybody. This is Packard Pokes at the Midweek Show. This is episode 493. Before we get started, I want to say there was a technical problem because I'm an idiot. <laughs> when I would upload the files, the files were there for the Midweek Shows for the podcast, and there was a problem with the HTML. What happened was I had changed the lettering, the numbering on there. But because the way WordPress works, it looks like it's just one big line. So when I was editing it, it didn't show me that it got cut. So it was actually two pieces of different HTML, one pointing to an old show and the later half of the HTML to the new show, which one you would want to be listening to. And it did this for several weeks until I, I've I thought I'd caught it and I thought I had corrected it. I did not. But as of yesterday, I did fix it for sure. It is fixed for sure this time. So if you're hearing this on this episode and not hearing 479 or 478 or whatever episode that was that kept repeating, I apologize. I have corrected the error. So I will be a little bit more on top of this kind of stuff a little bit more in the future. It's just been a little bit of a crazy month for me. So we've got people who want to talk about stuff. Atheist Ranger, what have you got a story about? Uh, well, Apparently, a lunatic labor counselor suspended for homophobia. Uh, I will post a link right here, so you can be with me if you want. Sure. Uh, a labor counselor in London, uh, Chika Amadai, a charity worker and evangelical pastor, has been suspended by the party for her anti-gay rants on social media. Good. Uh, yeah. Apparently, in the Facebook post, uh, the counselor shared a quote from the president of the Gambia in which he threatened gay men and women with prison. The quote reads, Homosexuality is anti-human. I have never seen a homosexual chicken or turkey. If you are convicted of homosexuality in this country, there will be no mercy for offenders. We will put you in the female wing of the prison. A labor counselor said, uh, Chica, um, whatever the fuck her name is, has been suspended from the labor party pending an investigation. Wow. Yeah. I've never seen homosexuality in a chicken. Yeah. You know what? That probably exists because it, homosexuality exists in every animal in the animal kingdom. Wow. Well, that, maybe, not, maybe not that specific species, but there are other species that do it. There are other animals that, that do engage in this, but you're looking at two fucking small pieces of, uh, of data. You're going to yeah. go turkey and a chicken. Well, they don't have the homosexuality. Yeah, those are birds. Those are birds. Most of, most of the species that have been observed to engage in homosexuality have been mammals, I believe. That very well could be. I don't know if there has been any and has any in birds, but maybe there is. Uh, Connie, do you have a story? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is from the raw story. High risk homosexual behavior. Insure the insurer is under fire for denying coverage for an HIV drug. An insurer denied HIV medicine to a gay man for allegedly quote engaging in high risk homosexual behavior. A letter from the United Healthcare posted in Facebook group from for HIV awareness showed that the insurer declined to pay for the man's prescription for Truvita which treats and reduces the risk of HIV infection and would cost up to $1,500 a month out of pocket. This decision is based on health plan criteria for Truvita, the letter says. The information sent in shows you using this medication for engaging in high-risk homosexual behavior. And it told the man his plan covers Truvita only used to treat HIV infection, reduce the risk for possible exposure or potential exposure for certain high-risk patients, but this man was told he didn't fit any of those criteria. The letter claims the decision falls under New York State governing health care coverage, but HIV activist Jeremiah Jones Johnson said that's not true. This was a malicious attempt to discourage pre-EP, pre-exposure prophylaxis upon uptake by people who need it most, uh, said God. Johnson of the Treat Action Group. That's disgusting. That it is. is 
disgusting. I mean, the fact is these people, they, they get the health insurance or whatever, and they say, oh, you had it. It's like the whole pre-existing condition bullshit. That's nonsense. Yes, that's that's not per, that's utter nonsense. That's not that's not fair to them. If we had a single payer, I guarantee you that story never would have even happened. Yeah. That's very possible. I think that's true. Again, but drug companies are for profit. You know, they have shareholders and things instead of in, I mean, investors for this kind of this kind of research, it shouldn't be for profit. You, you know, I think that I think that's just disgusting. Yeah, that sounds a lot like that uh, one. I, I forget the fucker's name. He basically had, uh, there was these EpiPens and people yes. needed these, some people need these pens to live. They would cost like five, 10 bucks or whatever. All of a sudden they were like $500. Uh, yes. Up. And I was like, what are you fucking doing? How, how bad is your need to have profit over the lives of people? That's just utterly disgusting. Yeah. That man was just in the news, and I wish I could think of his name. I was just trying to look it up. But again, it's, it's Sulk basically gave away the the cure for polio mm -hmm. you know uh, i'm sorry where there there needs to there, there are no ethics the ethics the ethics of for-profit medicine are bankrupt yeah and uh, i wish that they could be bankrupt in a way because i'm not sure i i don't you know what i i don't know how it could be any worse for people who actually need the drugs if yeah. the corporations went bankrupt um so and the story is also judgmental because it's try, you know trying to judge somebody's uh sex activity and say well yeah you don't deserve the medicine mm -hmm. that's just terrible that's that's just disgusting tom do you have a story for us tonight well it's not so much a story as it is uh what's in the news uh well, trump if you can call last week uh last week decided that trans sexual people were no longer allowed in light in the uh Military. Yeah, we talked about that on Friday. Oh, just Friday? Yeah. Well, then we my news is no news. Because Friday I was busy. I was a gateway to reason. I have not recovered yeah, yet. Yeah, you were supposed to send us some video and you never did. Yeah, you lazed the boat. <laughs> my weekend was so packed. He had speakers and no breaks. It was no nuts. breaks? He had like 35 no people. He had like Get 35 people speaking. Get out of the way. No breaks. Ah! Yeah. Took no video and no pictures either. I think I took like six pictures. You were there for a whole weekend. You got six whole pictures. Yes. <laughs> Tom, shame, shame. <laughs> Life is moving too fast. So you yeah. talked all about how the military is saying, "Screw you, Trump." Yeah, we talked about that on Friday. Got to slow down and take a look around. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you get nothing. Okay. <laughs> I get nothing. You get nothing. <laughs> I don't care what's happening in the news. That's why we do this show, because we care about this, what's going on. At least I do, anyway. Matt, what do you got for us tonight? Well, we had Matt for a second there. Yeah, this, this show is going very swimmingly. Yes. <laughs> Everybody showed up late. Swifty. Let's get Swifty with it. Speaking of Swifty, Rick and Morty. There was uh, season three, episode one, he was talking about, uh, if you're a fan of that show, how he, he went to this one dimension that has just the has it's always like 1993 or 1998 in it or something like that and it has the secret sauce that mcdonald's has for their yes. Szechuan. they sent the the producer of that show a, a whole gallon of it and it said brought back from dimension 1983 or whatever on there and he said he put, put pictures up on twitter and whatnot on this too <laughs> nice. it's really kind of cool yeah my daughter sent that to me and I was like, "Are you? That is fucking awesome. That is fucking awesome." <laughs> hey, Matt, since you're rejoining us, uh, what do you do? You have for a story for us tonight? Yeah, I do. Person in Denver, a, a man in a wheelchair, received a ticket after he was struck by an SUV for crossing the street. Oh, yes. I didn't hear about this. No, neither did I. And was he in the crosswalk? Yeah, he was in the crosswalk. What the fuck? And <laughs> And he was hit because apparently he didn't have enough time, you know, for the because, you know, the, the lights are timed and yeah. you know, pedestrians only have X amount of time to get across the street. Well, this person's in a wheelchair, so I guess he was, you know, too slow, the officers said, and they gave him a ticket. Uh, wow. wow, that's... It must be a slow cop day if you're, if you're giving wheelchair people tickets for getting across the crossway too slowly. And he got hit on top of it. That's insult to injury. Right. Well, for every time I've had some nimnut, when there's a crosswalk like 20 yards to the right or the left of them, walking down the, you know, crossing in the middle of the gosh darn road. 
right? You know, four lanes of traffic. And if you hit them, it's your fault. And I'm like, I just, no, no. <laughs> God. Yeah, I never believed that either. How how pedestrians are never at fault. Yeah, um, you know, and the the thing is though, I have to drive early in the morning, and the last several mornings, there's this one dude. He just seems to want to walk out right in front of me, like less than half a block, and walks out right in front of me in the four lanes, the the, the roads I have to drive on. They're all it's all four lanes in town, and he decides to walk out in front of me. So I'm have to, and if I'm not paying attention, and it's like four o'clock in the morning, if I'm not if I don't, if I'm not paying attention, I'm not going to see them. So I, I'm, I'm thinking that sometimes some of these people, they're just hoping that someone hits them because they're out there uh, that late in the morning and it's, it's still dark and they're not wearing uh, reflective clothing or anything. I'm wondering what the hell are you doing? I just want to, I resist to, to yell at my window, say you stupid fucker, get off the fucking road. And they're, they're not even crossing in the crosswalk. They're crossing like all, all over the place. No, I had a guy coming off uh, when I was coming off a highway ramp. Uh, and it came to the stop light guy standing there while it was red, looking around, looking homeless, looking derelict. And as soon as the right turned green, he decided that's when he's going to walk across. And not oh. only that, he's walking like super duper slow. Mm -hmm. So, he's, yeah, there, I, some of these people I think are looking for altercation, some ex some reason to feign being abused or injured. And I just sat there and, and you know, <laughs> stared at like, sure, be an asshole. Nope, didn't he? I just, I'm like, you want to be an asshole? Be an asshole. I don't care. <laughs> There's this one guy who, who has a tendency to bike out into the road occasionally. Everybody calls him bike kicker. And because he's a little, little, uh, little, uh, off and he would randomly just get pissed off at his bicycle and start kicking it. That's how he got the nickname bike kicker. Sometimes you'd run off in the middle of the, across the street for no reason and he did this several times. And I one day I just got pissed off. I said, hey, you do this in front of me and I will fucking run your ass over. And after that, I never saw him uh, try to cross it in front of me ever again after that. So or at least not. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes you have to say something to these people because if you don't, then they're just going to do it anyway. And I think that the, the realization that they're they're fucking up. It may not even be occurring to them. Well, of course it's not occurring to them because they've been told that, well, everyone gets told the whole life that pedestrians are never at fault. Yeah. If you are not in the crosswalk, you can be at fault. But I mean, and the, the, but that guy getting uh, a ticket for being in the crosswalk and he doesn't make the light in time because his wheelchair is slow or whatever. Oh, I agree. I, I agree. Hope, I, I hope that guy fights that one because that's just stupidity right there. Yeah, it is. Oh, I agree. It's crazy. Yeah. Did everybody get a chance to get a story in except for Tom because he didn't have a story? <laughs> he had a story. He had a story, but it was one we covered on Friday. This is why you come to the meetings because you you know what's what we're talking about. <laughs> Apparently, the meetings in preparation for Friday. Yeah, I know. I know. While we are poking at your news, you can poke us at Facebook and Twitter. Or poke us with an email at ppapodcast at gmail.com. Or leave us a message at 662-709-PPAP. Join us live on YouTube slash Packard Pokeset on Friday nights at 9 p.m. Central Time. Be part of the conversation by live chatting with us during the show. Enjoy the show? Help support us by becoming a monthly patron at patreon.com slash Packard Pokeset. Or look awesome by buying something at cafepress.com slash Packard Pokeset. No money, no problem. You can help us by sharing the show with friends and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher. For everyone that shares and rates us, you kick ass. The Atheists. The Bible. And No Wardrobe, the podcast. Wait a minute. No wardrobe? You mean, we're going to be naked while we do this? Well, seeing how I'm an atheist and I'm reading the Bible, and since clothes are flammable... Fire! 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 I thought it might be a good idea to take them all off first. <laughs> naked or not, follow along as we read, analyze, and try to keep you from falling asleep as we go through this boring-ass book. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. Who knows? We may even be on YouTube someday. Apparently, a, a couple of men escaped. Well, more than a couple. It was 12 guys, actually. They escaped jail 
using something you would probably not ex not ever suspect them using to get out. They used peanut butter. Make up your own jokes. Apparently, <laughs> give me a second. <laughs> Go ahead. The highly imaginative, albeit a startling escape, took place in Walter County, Alabama, where a dozen of inmates disfigured the number on one of the cell doors with peanut butter to make it look like one that leads outside of the jail. Because apparently, inside the jail, all the number, all the doors are numbered. So if they're like in a box or something, they press a number. I guess, or I'm not sure exactly how that all works. So, you know, I, I'm just going by what I know it from movies and shit. <laughs> it's like push the button and door opens. So apparently the guy was new. The, the jailer was new on the job and they tricked the jailer to open a door. Well, it says here, all one of them had to do was then convince the new jail employee who was watching all the prisoners on a closed circuit TV from a control room to open it, claiming he needed to go back in. Instead of, he had just unlocked the door that opened it to the outside. Changing numbers on the doors with peanut butter may sound crazy, but these kind of people are crazy like a fox, said the Walter County Sheriff's Department, uh, James Underwood. He thought it, he was opening the door to the cell door to the man to go to his cell, but in fact, he opened up the outside door. Underwood also added that he's not going to make excuses, but it was human error from a young lad. These are the, the charges that these inmates already have. I'm sure... Uh, trying to escape a federal prison, or a prison anyway, was still, will probably add more time to their to their sentence. At least two years. Yeah, at least three years. Uh, the inmates between 18 and 30 were facing charges for ranging from attempted murder to disorderly conduct, used blankets to climb over the razor-wired fence and circling the Walker County Jail. Eleven of the fugitives were captured within hours, while one... Brad, Bradley Andrew Kilpatrick, who was in jail on drug possession charges, is still at large. So there's still one out there. Still one out there. And the drug possession charge, it, that doesn't really hurt anybody, really. I mean, if he's just if he just has like some marijuana for his own personal use, I don't know what, what his uh, circumstances, what his case file is. Even selling marijuana. Even selling, who cares? Yeah, exactly. It uh, marijuana is not a dangerous drug. I mean, I wouldn't use it because mm -hmm. the fact is that I, I I don't do drugs, but I just deal with aspirin and that's it for me. But but this is this happened on this last Sunday. So this is this is <laughs> the imaginative ways that people get out of prison. The fact is that if you keep people locked up, they're gonna find a way out, one way or the other. I don't want to be that guy, but how do you confuse like I've toured a prison before and most of the numbers on there were like white colored. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I confuse that with peanut butter. Not to be that yeah. guy. I, well, you know, I wonder if it's it's chunky peanut butter and they were etching. I know that's what I, I was wondering know. too. I was I was wondering that too. I, atheist rangers, like, wait, it, did they make it look like it was the <laughs> it was the weight of the bathroom because it was stained, or did they etch it with chunky peanut butter? <laughs> well, it, it's hard to say. I mean, if those closed circuit cameras, I don't think that they're in color, and if they're not in color then they, they probably can't distinguish between uh, a darker color and a lighter color. So peanut butter, it's a rather light colored substance. It's not, you know, it's a light brown. It, it could be almost, it's almost taupe in color. So it, it depending on the pr the color of the walls in the prison, that could be uh, something, you know, that, that could be enough to confuse the cameras. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump is sitting there, wait, that's very ingenious. I might be to use that. Yeah. He... <laughs> Can we hire him? Tr Trump security. wants to hire, yeah, the, yeah, the tr Trump wants to hire, put him in charge of uh, the FBI. Exactly. <laughs> that, 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 I'm, I'm sure that young lad will probably uh, accidentally set off the nukes instead. No. <laughs> Speaking of the Trump White House, I we I, I just want to mention this really quick here. Apparently, the Mooch, we we barely covered him. We had one chance to talk about him, one show. And he's already out on his ass. He's already out on his ass. Twelve. He wasn't in there 10, 11, 10, 11 days. Shocker. I know, right? <laughs> it was. It was just kind of so funny. The fact is that he he talked about, hey, I don't I don't step from the back. I step from the front. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? You have to be a mob in, in a mob family, I think, to understand what the mooch is saying. He didn't even have his first official official day. Yeah. In that position. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, did he ever get a chance to get out and talk to the to the to the press reporters at all? I mean, once, twice maybe? Oh yeah. Not to my knowledge, I don't think he did. Gun uh, finger. He had the gun finger. He was interviewed by the press. He was interviewed by Washington a New York Post and New York Times. Mm -hmm. And uh that was that was uh 
actually aired on NPR and he was interviewed by somebody else. I'm sorry, I can't remember which news news source it was now. Uh, but yeah, he was interviewed interviewed by people and he was extreme. You know, he shot his mouth off literally. Mm -hmm. I oh yeah, yeah. And the thing was, he also in the same two weeks that he was there, just under two weeks, his wife filed for divorce because instead of being at his birth of his child with her, he was with Donald Trump. He's he's it's like, oh, you're just giving birth to my kid. I but I want to be with the Don because he's gonna see good things happen to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> idiot, fucking idiot. Whatever, whatever. Scare mooch the mooch of. Uh, bet on at you know saratoga or something bet on the actual opposite horse because yeah man he bet on definitely he definitely bet on the wrong horse there mm -hmm. <laughs> bet on a donkey and got a pile yeah. of shit <laughs> yeah couldn't this, happen this to whole, a guy <laughs> yeah yeah the, this whole administration is just going just swirling downhill and the thing was donald trump just like a few hours before mooch got canned it says there's no he he had tweeted out uh i saw this somewhere else that he said that there the the white house is not in any turmoil there's no nothing else going there's nothing going on at the white house that's bad you know <laughs> really I'm thinking, I'm thinking the penguins Fake in news. madagascar yeah <laughs> sorry you didn't see anything <laughs> fake news thank fake you news. thank you matt oh no problem mm -hmm. <laughs> that's yep. that's just too funny i'm sorry you that's said inmates and peanut butter and i was like well is it like the natural peanut butter where it's extra oily and you're just gonna like do a oh. whole shawshank redemption shawshank redemption i i don't know i do i do not know there <laughs> I thought, for a second there, i thought you were talking about that greased up deaf guy from family guy no 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 there <laughs> uh, apparently there was a I saw this just a few days ago that there apparently there was if you've ever seen the Shawshank movie, there was an inmate that got out basically kind of doing the same thing. He cut a hole in this grid and he recorded himself escaping from prison on a phone that he got snuck in and he posted it online and he added music to it as well. Oh my god, dumb that's ass. a real dumb move. Yeah, exactly. And they they, 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 caught, they they caught the guy. They caught the the guy like several hours later. But I mean, it was just just too funny. You think? Yeah, he recorded himself getting out. How he how he got out? How he had gotten out of his cell? How he climbed out to these one area where he cut out the bar, uh, some uh, parts of the bars? So he had been apparently been working on them for some time. So humanity is indomitable. It doesn't matter. I mean, these people, if they're in prison, they're going to find a way to get out legally or illegally. Well, the thing you got to realize is, you know, a lot of these prisons are old. This prison was a uh, maximum security. It was a fairly new prison, actually, he was in. Oh, really? Yeah. And they still escaped, huh? And they still got out. Yep. Wow. Well, for profit. It's for yeah. profit. You know what? Maybe that would be a future. Okay, let's talk. Would a for-profit prison be more profitable if prisoners could escape and then be, you know, caught and put back in at, you know, for another crime? Yeah. Because it's all about it's all about filling the cells. It's sort of like a rental townhouses and things like that. It's all about making sure that you're, you know, those beds are filled. They don't yeah. care how. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, does anybody else have another story they want to discuss before we go? How hot it is here in Washington State. Nobody how hot cares. is it in Washington State? If we, we, we're going to break 100 degrees this week. Wow. <laughs> I'm melting. I'm melting. What a world. Nobody cool. cares because guess what? Yeah. It's hotter where you guys are, I'm sure. D don't worry, Connie. There is no global warming. So you have nothing to worry about. <gasps> oh, God. <laughs> Thank you. Not really. Is it very rare for it to be 100 degrees out there? Uh, this time of year, it does get warm. But yeah, breaking 100 west of the Cascades is rare. Uh, oh, east okay. of the Cascades in the whole farmland area, oh yeah, you know, you'll have three-digit weather during the summer. Yeah. But yeah, here, yeah, it's it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> I did want to mention one quick correction. And I want to thank Hertz Rants for pointing this out to me. We had talked about on our OK Let's Talk how I, I said that out in Israel is probably very re highly religious because there's a lot of Israelites there and Muslims and whatnot, and Jews, actually. And he actually sent me an article and a link. And being intellectually honest, which I prefer to be, instead of saying, oh, no, you're wrong, he, he also gave me, I, I said, I, I told him, I said, what, I, what, I to what he told me was actually fairly interesting. 
and he sent a link to prove what he was saying that it's actually Israel is actually pretty secular overall. So I was like, I was really shocked at that. I thought that Israel would have been more of a uh, more highly religious uh, nation overall, but I was wrong. And I am fr I am happy to admit when I'm wrong. If you know you give me evidence to the fact, I will I will fess up and say, oh, you're right, I was wrong. Well, that's and, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that is interesting. I thought, you know, with Israel and, you know, the, with them fighting with the... Uh, Pal the West Bank Palestinians? Yeah, Palestinians and all that, or religion and stuff. I, I figured it, would, it was a highly religious country. Yeah. yeah I mean, Israel is kind of sim in, some, in some ways similar to the U.S. I mean, for example, we were found as a secular nation, but obviously we have a lot of religious nutbags in our government. I think it's probably the same over there. Yeah, probably. You know, it's funny, though. Is that now this one I know for sure that because their Sabbath is Saturday. So they do things so they don't have to do things on Saturday for like work. Like, for example, the elevators are all turned on. So they stop at every floor. So this way you can't do a work, quote unquote, by pushing a button because they consider that work. Or, and this was on uh, a movie, uh, Irregular, Irregulous, Irregular, Irreligious with, yes. Irreligious. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And how this guy was created a phone where you picked up a stick and you put it in there to interrupt the signal on the phone. So this way you're not actually doing any work. You're just dropping a stick in. I thought, you know, picking up a stick with that also would consider work. Just push the goddamn button on the phone, you know. <laughs> but, but And it just shows you that the fact is how ineffective that their God really is or any religion's God really is. If you can find a loophole to get around God's rules... That means God's not perfect. You didn't see the loophole. How petty and how petty and small the rules are. But I have to say that I I don't know. Uh, again, if if Israel really is a secular country, but they still have ways that they try to acknowledge people's beliefs. Yeah. Well, there he. You know, that's a little balancing act. Yeah. Well, he did send me an article that it, uh, that did mention how uh, that they are a secular country. So. I read the article thoroughly. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Uh, that was several days ago, but it does say that it is a secular nation. More, it's more, it's actually less religious than most people think, which I thought was really interesting. All righty, I suppose well we should get out of here. So we'll be back on Friday. We have some very interesting stories uh, I want to bring uh, up on. I'm bringing up on Friday, so you want to be here for that. So we'll catch you then. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And that's a wrap.